It is January 6th, 2020, and I just got my publishing company's business license. So the next step is going to be buying my ISBNs, and I could finish like three dolls for that. So that's what I've been busy with this week. I wasn't sure I'd get this video done in a timely fashion, so after spending most of the week running crazy business errands, it was time to sit down and work on this. I actually worked at the wig over the course of several days, as you can tell by the deterioration of my nail polish. So while I've made a few videos about them, I get a lot of questions about synthetic BJD wigs and requests for more tutorials focused on synthetic wigs. I'm running through making a wig today, but what I really want to talk about is why I don't typically make synthetic wigs and why I don't really like doing it. I had this wig cap I'd made for Laylee and took it in a bit to use for my evil queen here, just to save some time. That triangle bit on the back won't be visible once it's sewn flat with wefts over it. I'm using heat resistant synthetic fiber for this. The wig cap is made out of power mesh and elastic, and I'm just sewing the wefts onto the wig cap with regular thread. I know seeing the needle that close to the doll's head might freak some people out, but because the needle isn't poking in toward her and is instead just kind of skimming sideways, she's not at risk of being scratched. These wefts were ones previously used on a cosplay wig I had, but they're pretty typical of what you can expect if you just order wefts online. The tracks are pretty narrow and not too thick, the fiber is reasonably fine, and I sew them to the wig cap with a fairly big space between them at first. They'll get closer together along the front edge of the wig. I'm also leaving a tail that's at least a quarter inch long toward the front edge, which will be tucked under and sewn on the inside just to make sure the front has a tidy finish when everything is done. Pretty basic wig making stuff. So far so good, right? So why do I not like making these? Well, the first reason is time. This video is sped up and cut a lot, so you can't really tell by watching it, but sewing a wig like this is super time consuming for me, even after I've done it a few times. Between sewing the wig cap and sewing the wefts and doing all the styling, it's not unusual for a wig like this one to take me six or seven hours to make. I don't know about you, but I don't really have six or seven hours in a week to devote to things like this, unless I'm making a video about it, apparently. <laughs> if you're trying to make a good wig that retains its stretch and is slightly stylable and can fit more than one doll, then it is best to sew it. I don't typically share wigs between my dolls because they all have really specific looks that I go for, and they're also a lot of different sizes, so it's not easy for them to share anyway. So when I make wigs, I prefer to use glue. I've made hot glue synthetic wigs on my channel before, but I know some people have mixed feelings about the hot glue because it does discolor with time, and it can eventually turn brittle. However, I personally haven't had issues with that, and while the glue on the ones I've made in the past 10 years has yellowed a bit, it's still just as strong and flexible as when I made it, so your mileage may vary. But the hot glue doesn't save synthetic wigs from other issues. The part I've made for the top of this wig is two wefts layered on top of each other, and I'm going to be doing a typical fold-over part where the hair is sewn down opposite the direction I want it to go in the end. It'll be folded over and pressed down to create the part and theoretically hide the weft. This is another reason I'm not crazy about synthetics. While you can get gorgeous doll wigs from companies, they have access to wefts in a different quality that can be a lot harder to source here, ones with thicker and more even hair distribution. That thread track at the top where the hair is anchored into a weft is also a lot thinner, which means it's easier to get a good looking wig. Is it possible for us to buy those kinds of wefts? Yes, it is, but they're difficult to find usually have to be ordered from overseas, so there's no way to see or feel the fiber before purchase. And heaven forbid you don't order enough and then have to wait two months for another order to come in, only to discover there are different production lots and not the same color. Yeah, that happened. 
Usually by the time you spend that money for supplies, you would have been able to afford a really nice quality wig from a proper BJD company, and you'd get better results than you probably would from doing it yourself. You can make finer wefts yourself, but they require nylon or saran hair, and those tend to have a really shiny, plasticky look, and they don't turn out as natural. And then there's the styling. You pretty much have to use heat resistant fiber because there's no other way that these fold over wefts will work. The wefts on top get folded over, but getting them to actually iron flat and lay in a way that hides the tracks can be really difficult. This isn't like alpaca fiber or even brushed yarn wigs where you can use low heat and smooth over something and bam, it just stays perfectly. It can take a lot of time and effort to get these fibers retrained, and even after they're trained, it can be difficult to keep them styled. One problem I frequently encounter with buying wefts is that they have these shorter hairs where it's folded over and sewn into the track. These aren't really noticeable at human size because we have these little flyaways all over our heads that are this length, but they're so much more noticeable on a doll because the head is so much smaller. You can position them to be on the underside of the weft, but if you get even a single one turned the wrong way, you end up with these horrible little tufts that stick up all over, because they'll push up and out between the longer hairs. Synthetic wigs are also harder to style than natural fibers because they're so much heavier. I particularly love alpaca fiber because it's really light and floaty, and it's hard to style a synthetic wig in a similar way. The weight is great enough that it keeps trying to pull itself down off the doll's head. I think we've all seen those doll photos where the wig has crept back and back and back and the doll's forehead just seems to get taller and taller. That happens pretty commonly with these synthetic wigs. Even after I use heat to press down wefts, I usually have to cover a doll's head with something, usually pantyhose, and use a hairdryer to heat the fiber to try to get it to stay down. In my experience, it also tends to be harder to curl than natural fiber. In my experience, it also tends to be harder to curl synthetic fibers than natural fibers. When curling, it's less important that it gets hot and more that it cools while still in the shape you want it to hold. Natural fibers have that too, but to a lesser extent, and they also cool faster than synthetic fibers. Two or three minutes after curling this fiber, it was still warm to the touch. Whereas, if I were working with alpaca, it would have cooled off within just a few seconds. I get around this by trying to pin curls up to cool while I work on the rest, but at the end of the day, no amount of heat is going to cure this issue. When everything is done, I'll still have to take this downstairs and use hairspray on it to get a decent end result. You definitely don't want to spray hairspray on a doll wig while it's on the doll, because the hairspray will totally ruin a face up. Even hairspray won't cure one thing though, which is that synthetic fiber never lays as flat as natural fiber, so it still has some poof. The finished wig isn't bad, I don't think, and it'll work for now. It fits, it looks decent, and I was able to style it, but I could have made at least three alpaca wigs in the time it took me to make this one and I probably would prefer the end result of those wigs because I find natural fibers a lot more forgiving than synthetics. Now that I've said all that, I do want to make it clear that there's nothing wrong with synthetic wigs, and I use them for a number of my dolls, especially those with long hair. But I figured I would address why I personally don't enjoy making synthetics and instead prefer to just buy them from companies like Monique because they're always beautifully crafted and lay in a way that I could never replicate at home. So if you're wondering why there aren't more synthetic wig tutorials on my channel, there you go, that's a basic rundown. But that's my opinion and my experience working with this material. 
That's all for today, though. Thanks for watching. Bye.